thanks for staying with us. So I'm sure many of you are wondering why we have our balloons. studio uh, decorated with balloons and flowers. It's because this week, oh, we're supposed to celebrate your view. We've been postponing it for a while. You know, <laughs> and then the next day is June 12th day, Democracy Day. Ah, again. But we, again. <laughs> but we are thanking God that this last segment is for us. So mm -hmm. we're going to be celebrating your view at 10 because it's not beings to be doing on television for 10 years. Tell me. <laughs> so, 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 I like you know, that. <laughs> this year has been training me. But the truth is, the team, our team, the production team, put together a mini documentary about the ladies of your view, stating how they have started, how far they have come, and uh, where we are, and their prospects for the future. We we'll love our viewers to watch this short documentary, and then after that, we'll have the conversation on it. When I was interviewed to come into TVZ as Deputy Director of Programs, I had told my interviewer, the MD at the time, um, Nigel, that um, I wanted to have a show in mind which I wanted to host. And he was like, that's fine, you know, he had actually given me 30 days to develop a report um, that would show the work I wanted it to do. And um, the show of a woman sitting down together was one of it and it was approved. One of the first things I did was bringing my team from High TV, you know. I brought him, um, Akiandi Olafusi, um, Yinka Jija Didu, Shio Arioye, uh, Fumi, so many people there, my close circle in High TV. Those are the guys that I brought in to work with me. I, said, I told them, I sat, down, I, sat, I sat them down together. I said, listen, we have a vision. Our vision is to develop a new channel. Uh, we need to rebirth this channel. We gave it a new name, new colors, not new name, new, new identity, new colors, um, a new programs. We started seeing how we can re rejuggle some of the programs. How it started was um, I came to audition for an entertainment show. If you know you're bold and beautiful, audition for this. I was just sitting in my house one day and I got a phone call from Mr. Lukman Musa. And so I did my one minute video. And interestingly, I found that thousands of women across Nigeria had done a one minute video. So I had no hopes of getting on, but quite, I was quite surprised when I was asked to come for a physical audition. When I came, I was in the makeup room. They had to you know, touch me up. I didn't know what the show was about. I remember coming there and there were so many people there. And I sat down beside a lady who had worked at NTA for 15 years. I was like, I'm just here for the numbers. I'm just here for statistics. Nobody's going to even look twice at me. Actually, a friend of mine, Carol and I, have been thinking of hosting a TV show. At the end of the conversation, I found out that from our card that I was talking to Mariah Falabi Brown and she was the Deputy Director of Programs for TVC. Mariah looked at me and was like, would you like to come if I invite you? And I'm like, yes, I'm up for it. And how I got into the show was by stumbling into uh, Mariah's then temporary office that looked like a reception. And from that point, we did several auditions. And after a couple of months, I did that from Mr. Musa. I said, no, don't worry, we're working on it. And so, subsequently, they used to call me to come and record the show. Me, I didn't know they were doing private auditioning that time. They didn't tell us, so they just say, come, we are just doing recording to see. And then one day, on the 29th of May, was our first show. And then they gave me newspapers to read, and I was wondering, ah, what is my business with newspaper and coming to talk about how I can rap and do some things, you know? I got to meet Mariah with, uh, host of staff at the audition and they asked me questions I answered fingers crossed I left and then to my surprise I was asked to come back for a live audition I had made it among the 10 the best 10 you know um, people who had auditioned I could not believe my luck I scaled through the first audition so I waited in an office to stay out of the sun and I stumbled into the office. I was having a conversation with someone I did not know at the time. After all the gist, the person told me I could not have qualified for the audition. <laughs> and then the show started, it was a good one. And after the show, um, Mariah looked at me and was like, would you like to come if I invite you? And I'm like, yes, I'm up for it. Because the conversation was so enlightening. We had different views. I think we had a guest that day. Yes, I, I can remember, and it was good. It was the first time I was experiencing being on live TV like that, and it was fun. So that was how I started coming as a guest co-host, guest co-host, guest co-host, and finally became a host on the show. The funny part of my story is that I wasn't actually picked. You know, someone was picked, but 
two weeks after i was called back by the producers and they said why don't you come for like a probation period and let's get to see you more and that was how my journey on your view began we didn't even have a name at the time we had no clue in fact interestingly we didn't have a name until the day we were about to start the show. It was while I was on set, the producer of me was in my ears telling me, are you sure you want to go with this name? Because we're going to go with um, The Morning Show. So the idea then was to replace The Morning Show at the time with our show. Um, but I, I, I told them I wanted it to be called Your View, which was actually an offshoot of the, the View in the US, which I had watched. And I was there in America when they had the opening um, of that show and I fell in love with that show and I'm like when I get to Nigeria I have to do this kind of show so in my mind I already have the name of Your View but my team members are like no you can't have a show called Your View what is that please it's the morning show Tinka and Fumi were in my ears up until the start of the show and I said uncle it is Your View you know and it was quite and I told them to use the montage because I asked them to do the both montage for the, this morning show and Your View and I insisted to the few seconds to nine o'clock I said use your view. The show has opened up a huge platform. We have met several people. I can brag that I've interviewed several governors. I can brag that I've interviewed the last three governors of Lagos State. Um, bragging rights for interviewing the first lady of Nigeria that is passing out now. We've had so many guests. I don't think I can think of one without offending the other because we've had so many fantastic guests on the show. My brother, Femi Kuti, I was on the show. <laughs> My nephew, Made Kuti, I was on the show when uh, Fashola was governor. That was a that was a good guest too. Charles Okocha, we're global now. I really love that show. And then the young boy, Kurede Bello. I don't get a lot. God damn. Picking a favorite guest on the show is like picking a favorite child because everyone that's come on the show has made you know an impact, has opened up my mind has um, given me new perspective. So it's really hard for me to pick the favorite person. I have an appreciation and respect for um, Mr. Fashola, the Minister for Works and Housing. And he, and that, that was because of how forthcoming he is when it comes to matters of governance. So before your view, usually when you would talk to government officials, they would make it seem like you're asking questions that are way above you. Nothing can be explained, nothing can be understood because only a group of people have that understanding. Quite a number of guests that I really like their energy. I like Omaumi, the singer. Uh, so it will be favorite guests. I won't just mention one person. I like Princess, the comedian. Uh, these are people I know when they come on the show, we are going to have a good laugh. Um, we've had some uh, prominent guests, you know, coming on the show and sharing with us um, and giving insightful information across the conversation. I've had so many memorable moments, but I think the one that really stands out is surprise birthday that was thrown for me by the ladies of your view um i've never really celebrated my birthday like big or anything but this on this particular day i was on the show and at the end of the show guess what someone with the saxophone comes out the ladies come off uh, you know the ladies that were not on the show come off from their hiding places and i could not believe it i felt like a princess i was celebrated on my birthday on the show and for the whole of nigeria <laughs> to see we're counting down towards our 10th anniversary and i met somebody saying that i have children just because i watched your show and i met someone who helped me through my surrogacy journey finished you know so for me that'll be my most impactful show getting the ladies was not an easy task because i was doing so many shows you know entertainment splash we had christened lunch splash at the time to be entertainment splash and we wanted young people and that's how talkway came in at the time um but i was specific on the kind of show i wanted i didn't want a show of journalists i didn't want anybody who had experience on television i wanted somebody fresh people many of our tv shows had lots of men talking about governance politics business life and i'm like women to have opinions we were quite rusty the first few years trust me we had no clue if i used to get complaints from politicians they have no idea what is going on in nigeria why are they talking like that but um it was hard the first few years but eventually um, we were able to adjust and that's how your view started and um, it's been like that since then. Picking one particular favorite show will be tough but I would say that like many fans that watch everybody can pick the one they like. I couldn't even pick just one. It's quite difficult to pick a favorite guest but the truth is that every single guest that come on that show is a favorite guest. Another memorable part was when the first lady was coming on our show. Now at the time 
We had never had any first lady anywhere come on the show. And we were so, we were so scared. They're like, we're about to see the first lady. You know, I remember the ladies then, what are we going to wear? Who's coming with us to make up? Are we going to, are we going to Abuja? And we now found that she was coming to Marina in Lagos. We're excited. In fact, even our spouses were there to support us. You know, it was a very, very uh, memorable time for us when we, we felt really uh, um, we felt like we we're doing something good because if the first lady of the nation was willing to sit amongst the ladies of your view, that moment for me was very instructive of the kind of impact we've had in, in, in nation building. So I was really excited. It was a very memorable t um, time for me and I'm pretty excited about that moment even till now. My favorite time on the show was after I gave birth to uh, my child and people didn't know that I was pregnant all through on the show from beginning to the end. So I think that you know, Nigerians tend to like, I felt I was, I coded it well. People in the studio obviously knew, but a lot of our fans didn't know I was pregnant. So for me, that would be like interesting that I hid my pregnancy well all through the show and I was on the show a day before giving birth. So that, that would be my favorite time on the show. We share so many stories on that show. <laughs> Those of us that like to gist our personal things. There's this story um, Mima shared one time on the show where she was at an event and some girls that had properties in front and behind were dancing close to her husband and she had to jump up <laughs> from wherever she was sitting. We went for one party along me and my husband and because me I don't like public. Sat down shopping, exactly. shopping they will reach out. <laughs> and then I heard the band calling my husband's name, calling the band where he works, hailing him, hailing him. And some three air pass. These people got carry behind, <laughs> be front, be everything. They go like she go all this way long. We do everything like this. <laughs> I <laughs> How many times did I call you? Don't be sleeping. So you got to stand up. I got to up. I didn't say that in public. I used my stomach. They are the wife, bro. I had a good laugh on the show. Um, I think the most memorable moment for me was when we interviewed the Chibok girls' parents. It was very, you know, heart wrenching, and you know, it, 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 it was a very passionate show. So I think I would call that my most memorable. This one is my funniest moment on the show. And it was, we were talking about a cabal in the, in the villa. And uh, Mum and Dara's name came up quite a bit. And BC was talking about it. And she said, what is that woman doing in that place? She should go back to her house. Doesn't she have a husband? Then we told her, we're like, you know, we're a bit confused, like, what's happening? They're like, Mama, Mama Dara. We're like, no, it's not Mama Dara, it's Mama Dara. She was like, oh, I don't know. And what, what I love about her is nothing phases her. And she just moved on, like, Psh, okay, well, Mama Dara should go back to his house, you know. One of my most memorable moments was when I removed my wig on national television. Even I was shocked because I didn't plan to. You know, I can't remember the topic we're talking about, but I just thought the need to show that, listen, I can do without a wig, you know. Um, so I took it off and that video went viral. Everybody was talking about it. Um, it was a major, major memorable moment that I could never forget. Even till tomorrow, I still get people sending me that, that video like, Mariah, how could you take your hair off on national TV? Yeah, so. Um, low point of the show will be October 21st, 2020. And it will be seven years after being on the show and feeling like we've contributed a whole lot, speaking truth to power, adding value to people's lives, contributing our quota, and we were now the victims of, of being attacked by people who just felt that we represented something that they did not agree with. So yes, that was a very low point of, um, on the show. It was really a very touching uh, time for all the ladies of Your View and TVC as a whole because the place was really attacked. Uh, we had people who got injured, you know, had cars got damaged. The ladies, a few of them were just barely able to escape and it was really a low moment. It was heartbreaking. It was so sad. It was so sad for me especially because I felt that the ladies of your view have always used that platform and their voice to speak up for the regular Nigerian, for the Nigerian just like you and I. And we have always spoken up to government, said the truth, and especially when it had to do with the NSAIDs conversations, I believe we're one of the very first um, platforms to allow for people to come and express their views. And 
social media started a false narrative that we were supporting something very different. At first we ignored it because we thought no one who had watched the show for as long as they had watched the show would question, you know, where, what our stands were. One of the lowest points of the show was when I said my husband could never um, bath my children. That was a very low point because I was broken because uh, I got so condemned by the public, viewers, friends, families, even loved ones condemned me on this matter. I had very few people on my side. Um, it's worthy of note to say that I had a few mentors who stood by me during that period. Um, so that morning, um, the current First Lady, um, Senator Lore Mitinubu, called me and told me she was in camp, that she's going to gather a few pastors, they're going to pray along with me. She said, I want you to go on set and I want you to apologize to your husband on national TV. Ah, in my mind, I'm like, hey? I said, yes, because you must apologize. I knew I, had, I owed him an apology, but I just didn't think I should do it on TV. She was when I instructed me to do it on TV. And then um, I now called the director of news, Stella Dean Jacob, to ask her, like, okay, um, Senator Tinubu just called me and told me to do this. What do you think? She said, Mariah, I think it's a good idea. I think you should apologize to him on TV. So I, danced, and I, and I went on TV that, that day, the next day, and I apologized. And I didn't plan to cry. I was going to complain. In fact, <laughs> I was specifically asked to comport myself and not cry. But I did the exact opposite. As I started like this, I broke down on TV. And um, it was a really, really down time for me because my husband didn't deserve the kind of attention he got concerned because of the kind of person he, he is. You know, he's a man of God. He's the kind of person that did reverse God and all that. So I was shocked when everybody started calling him names that did not belong to him. So it was a down time for the, for the family, but I'm thankful they stood by me. My family members stood by me, but you know, um, it was hard, but it took us time to evolve. Yes, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't exert or show his, express his anger outside for the public. Internally, hmm, I knew that he was mad at me, trust me. Lessons learned on the show, number one, current affairs is very important. Before I started the show, I was not current. Today, I, I read papers, I listen to the news. I can't believe that me comes into my room, my, my TV is on the news channel. You know, I I like to hear news all the time. I like to know what is happening. So I think that that's been my most um, important lesson that I've learned on the show. It's being current, knowing what's happening in the government. Be comfortable enough to air your opinion and stand by it. And when the backlash comes, it's okay. Um, I've also learned that people will hail you and tomorrow they will yab you. I see the show 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, different people on the panel still doing what it was originally meant to do, adding value, um, speaking truth to power providing platform for women to express themselves. I'm excited about what the future holds and I'm excited that we're 10 years down the line. I've learned not to be so reactive, <laughs> to, um, you know, see the issues as it is, you know, and find a way to not take it personal. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm still learning not to take issues personal. So sometimes on the show, when I get comments, uh, um, fans, sending direct attacks to me probably because i've said something that they do not believe in i used to be very reactive but these days i'm learning to just read the comments and ignore and move on to something else because most times it's not about me it's about what they are feeling at the time that they are sending the comments for me i need to say this especially when i joined the show i would say you know i was still finding my voice and finding my confidence but having been on the show for a while I will say definitely my voice has, you know, my voice is stronger and my confidence, you know, even more tangible. And I've learned that it's because you show up every day uh, and do not pay too much attention to the small mistakes. If you show up the next day, you do better. And every day you show up, you just do better. And so I've learned that, you know, you can build confidence. And whatever it is that you're not good at today, as long as you're showing up and you're consistent, you will get better and you will do better. Um, grateful to God for the platform. Grateful to God for Murayo putting the show together. I'm grateful to all the successive leaders that we've had for TVC, you know, because if you don't have the platform to, to house the show, you don't have a show. So grateful to all the directors um, that we've had, the CEOs of TVC, 
from hand to hand and where we are so far. Ready for our current directors, the team behind the scene, the team that started the show, um, and the team grooming the show right now. I don't think that there is one person that will say, oh, this is, I am the one. Your view is successful because many people have put in their sweat, their blood, their energy into contributing into this show. And for everyone at one point or the other who has contributed to this show, thank you. God bless you. The show is beyond whatever plans Moriah Falabi Brown had for the show. The show has grown way beyond her. Uh, I see the show growing way beyond the individuals right now. More people will come in, more people will be a part of the show, and we will look back and say, I was a part of your view. I am grateful for the opportunity to be one of your view ladies. I am grateful for meeting Moriah Falabi Brown. I'm grateful for her ability to spot talent and say, okay, I think you can do well here and I think you can do well there. I'm grateful that she answered her calling. If she hadn't set up the show, maybe I won't be here today. I'm grateful for the team that, you know, worked um, timelessly over and over to ensure that we have a good and an amazing show. I'm grateful for the producers, I'm grateful for the directors, the ones before, the ones that are going to come, you know, I'm grateful for the makeup artists, those people behind the scenes that put this together, the cameramen, you know, everybody who is involved in bringing your view to the spotlight. I'm happy to be a part of the team. Because in the 10th year already, your view has become a legacy product, a legacy um, program. When you talk about our country today and talk about what's mainstream, you would call your view. And some of us have become household names. And as exhilarating as that can be, it's also quite humbling. And it is humbling because we know that it's beyond who we are today, but just the words that we have spoken, the platform that we have and able to use our voice. So I do see in 20, 30, 50 years, women much younger than us, our children, doing this and yes so in a few more years or many more years to come i just think that will be bigger more impactful and we will change the world i am so appreciative that we as a team are working together not only to give you good content but also to give you impactful and wholesome content so i appreciate that i am part of this group i appreciate that i'm a part of a positive group like ours my dream for your view is to be like Barbara Walters. Wake up in the morning, take a cup of tea, relax, watch, put up your TV and watch the ladies of your view expressing their views. I want to be 19 years old watching your view ladies talking to, to power, speaking. I want to see different generations of your view. I want to see women continually um, express their opinions in different ways. I love the fact that since your view started, there's been lots of repli um, replications of the same format. Many people have started shows where women sit down together and gather. That's a success to your view. That's something we're so proud of and we hope that this will continue. So it's a good platform where people have been able to show that we can actually agree to disagree. We're a nation because we're diverse. So my dream is for your view to continually to go beyond me and the ladies who are there today. Our, our hope is that when we are 90, we're seeing young people taking over the show. Oh, I would love, love to appreciate all those who have made your view possible. The very first person I must acknowledge is Mr. Lemmy Ola Lemmy. He was the former managing director of TVZ. He was one man that stood by us. No matter how things went down, Mr. Lemmy will always come and remind us that, listen, I'm behind you. You're, you're going to make this happen. Don't mind the people outside. Don't mind the forces. I am with you. So, Mr. Lemmy, thank you. I also like to thank the current Managing Director, Mr. Andrew Hallen. He's been a great support because he provides a platform for us and has helped the show to evolve. He has been there to give us all the necessary support. Also, the current director, for Larry, thank you so much for your continuous support and grooming us, the ladies. I must not forget the late RDJ. RDJ also helped us with our speaking, helped us with our posture, he helped us with how we carry the tea, all the various um, things we see on TV. And to the team that started your view, I must acknowledge them. They have been so amazing. The very first 
producer was for me. She was the very first producer. Me and her used to fight, you know, but she was, she was, she was a leader. Then Mr. Lukman Musa was the one that helped us with the planning of the show, as in the format itself was developed by myself and Mr. Musa. Um, we had Yinka Jijadu, who came up with the design. We had um, Shane Wario here at the time. Everybody was a team, and it was a team effort. Akia Deola Fusi was also part of the development of the show. And now, today, we have the team who has been taking on, who has taken on the burden, Mr. Dola Pamara Desa, with his, with his team. So many other people who have every single day and i cannot forget the men behind the cameras they are always there mr Akin and his entire team and the makeup artists thank you so much guys you've always been there we've had so many makeup artists that have been there from the beginning and they're still there so the team you 10 years of your view and it's not just 10 years it's every single day for 10 years monday through friday it's not beans it's not beans thank you to the entire team god bless you thank you so much for um upholding the dream of your view and we hope that as your view progresses to 15 years, 20 years, 30 years, many of you will be proud of what you started 10 years ago. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. <laughs> Fantastic. I mean, I mean, I had goosebumps. I, ha I had so much fun watching it. I was wondering. <laughs> we got to show that again. I mean, yes, I was just saying, because lots of our viewers on yeah. television didn't see. So hopefully we can show you sometime again this week. But I'm pretty excited. Um, guys, your thoughts, let me just come to you. I don't even know what to say. I'm speechless <laughs> right now. But it's been 10 years. But I must, I must, I must acknowledge Nima Akasha Zibiri. Mm -hmm. She's on medical leave. I mean, many of her fans have been asking, where is Nima? Where is Nima? Nima has not gone anywhere. She's just taking time out to be 100% when she's back. You're definitely going to see her back on the show. Um, she's, she's, she told us, we can tell you that she's on medical leave right now. But please, um, she's not away from the show. She's part <laughs> she's, of the team. Part of us. There's still six still ladies of <laughs> your view. Uh, YK was out for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. She just came in last week. So we have to just throw in our own interview quickly. But um, Nima is still definitely much with us. Ladies, <laughs> your thoughts on the video? Ah, it was interesting to see how far we had come. You know, sometimes when you come every day, you, you become so used to it that you do not know how far you're going. You do not know the impact you're making. Your view is a platform that even when we travel outside the country, you yeah. would definitely find people who recognize you and say, ha, ah, that topic you talked about, that they touched me. We'll get messages every day to say this aspect of life that you touched on, this aspect of life helped me. I was able to change. I was able to grow. Um, I remember there was one very interesting incident with uh, a lady who came to my store at the trade fair and she sat down. She said, I had helped to change her life, that oh. she listens to the show every day. Now she knows how to take care of herself. She hears us out. You know, she's improving. She showed, you know, showed and spoke how she, her life had improved just by watching the show every morning. It gave me goosebumps and I was happy that it may seem like it's little, but we're making impacts. That's just it That's for so me. Good. Yeah. Very good. All right. <laughs> Um, so I, 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 I thought that I knew when, when they asked us to put together um, content for that stuff, I thought I mentioned natural hair journey, you know, because I'm natural today. I just, it just occurred to me something that I really loved about the wave of natural hair that first blew through TVC and then around everywhere. Um, but it's, um, it's a blessing. And I know we're celebrating all week, so we're still going to get to comment on this all week. Let me let my yeah. um, come in. Yes. Um, we have very little time, but I just want to say, personally for me, the first thing would be that I have a group of sisters. Mm. I'm, and I'm so grateful for that. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I think I think I'd like to reiterate that. You yeah. know, I think I was even talking about told when she went to, I was in Dubai, you went to, yeah. and she was saying that one of the key things she learned there was how you create a system or you create a group or those, those are phrase, a tribe. You know, <clears throat> she was trying to tell Mariah, we already have a tribe. Like you, the ladies, us, we are a tribe. Mm -hmm. We need to build on that. We need to make that something. And that's true. We have a jewel here. We, mm -hmm. this, this team of six ladies working together is something. So I think this celebration is just the beginning. Yeah. Because, yes, we've done your view together, but we can do greater things together. And mm -hmm. I think I love that tribe, and I think that that connection brings us together. Yes. Finish? Yes, yes, I will finish. So I'm grateful for the sisters. But we're grateful for all our viewers. Mm -hmm. See, it doesn't matter if it's a positive feedback or a criticism. We thank you because they say iron, iron sharpness iron. <laughs> so sometimes even when 
we get a feedback that we're not too happy about, at least we learn from it. So thank you for being with us all through the years. For me personally, it's been five years. For the whole show, it's been 10 years. I hear people, I, mean, I met someone who says, I've been watching your views since I was a little girl. I was like, mm. <laughs> oh, please. Yeah, yeah. like, oh, you know? <laughs> but we were just so grateful. The young, the old men, women, just thank you for you I, know, being on this journey with us. I'd like <laughs> to thank um, the platform. You know, nothing beats TVC. a platform like mm -hmm. TVC, mm -hmm. and that's the truth. TVC has, mm -hmm. has been very gracious to give us this platform. And me especially, I am somebody that, the truth is that if I go through a presentation exam today, I might, I might, I might fail mm -hmm. because I don't have the attributes of a presenter. I stutter on my words. Mm -hmm. I, I, I speak very fast. Um, there, there are a few things that even till now I still struggle with. But somehow, God has just put this grace for us mm -hmm. to be able to do this thing effectively yeah. mm -hmm. and graciously for so long. And I'm thankful for that opportunity that I have women who are smart, who are eloquent, who are, who are, who are articulate and able to make this show what it is. So it's not just about me, it's about women, it's about a team, it's about a group of people who have put this show together. And I thank God for them and I'm grateful to God for 10 years of consistency. You can't buy that.